The Daily Code Snippet. Today we will talk about positioning our images. We will look at an example of what we would like our layout to look like. In this screen recording, we have a web page where we have an article, and that article has a featured image at the top and two other images. The second image is to the left and has the text flowing around it, while the other image is to the right and has the text flowing around it. There is also space between the image border and the text. So how would we go about coding this? Here is our HTML. We see that we have a section. That section has an H3 article heading. There are several instances of paragraph text with placeholder text. And we have our three image elements. Note, for the purpose of our video, we are truncating some of the placeholder text in alt and title descriptions. This way, we can focus your attention to the key HTML code. Because we have three images and we will be styling them differently, we added class attributes so that they can be targeted individually. Our featured image will display just after our article heading and span the full width. It is a crop of the image we used for demonstration purposes in our last video. The left image is floated to the left so that the text can wrap around it, and our right image is floated to the right, so our text can wrap around it. Now we can look at the CSS. Here is the CSS for our featured image. We target that image by having a selector that says period featured, because it is a class attribute. And we set the width to 100%. This is fairly simple. We want the image to span the full width, and the default is for the height to be auto and display proportionally. Here is the CSS for the image to the left. We target period left. We want the image to span only about one third of the full width of the containing element. By floating the image to the left, it remains in normal flow, and the text will move around it. In order to not have the text right at the edge of the image, we add some margin to the relevant sides so that the text wraps around with some space in between. Here is the CSS for the image to the right. We target period right. Again, the image will only span about one third of the full width of the containing element. We float this image as well, but to the right instead. We also add margin to the relevant sides, so there is a little space between the image and the text. Now that we have seen the code, let's look again at how this would display on our page. The vertical align property with regards to images can be used to position an image in relation to a line of text. It can only be applied to elements that are inline or inline block. The vertical align property can have the following values, baseline, sub, super, text top, text bottom, top, middle, and bottom. Baseline will align the baseline of an element with the baseline of its parent element. Sub will align the baseline of an element with the subscript baseline of its parent element. Super will align the baseline of an element with the super baseline of its parent element. Text top will align the top of an element with the top of the parent element's typeface. Text bottom will align the bottom of an element with the bottom of the parent element's typeface. Top will align the top of an element with the top of the entire line. Middle will align the middle of an element with the baseline plus half the x height of the parent element's typeface. Bottom will align the bottom of an element with the bottom of the entire line. This is the HTML for an example showing how the vertical align property affects the positioning of an icon against a line of text.
Here is the CSS. First, we look at the CSS that applies to all the icons, and then we will look at the CSS of different vertical align values. Now we will look at how this will display. In the first set of examples, we will look at baseline, sub, and super. In the next set, we look at text top and text bottom. In the final set, we look at top, middle, and bottom. The vertical align property also supports the specification of a length in pixels, m's, or percentages. This will align the baseline of an element to a given length above or below the baseline of its parent element, since negative values are supported, with percentage being that of the line height. This is the HTML for an example with various lengths for the vertical align property. Here is the CSS. This is how it would display. The top item is using percentage. The second item is using M's. The third item is using negative M's. And the last item is using pixels. Presented by Designers Learn Code.